Hey, it's Mama. Thank you for joining us today. And I have a special guest speaker, Mr. Dry Creek Wrangler. All uh, the way in. <laughs> I've traveled a long way to be here. Uh, this is my husband, Dwayne. Uh, he's been on a video or two of mine. And uh, of course, I've been on a couple of his. So if you watch uh, his channel, you already know me. And you already know him. Uh, so we were talking this morning. Uh, we had a really interesting conversation and we thought, you know, we should make a video and share this with, with everybody because I think this is a pretty big topic that a lot of people, um, you know, need to hear or need to talk about or whatever. So uh, why don't you tell them kind of what we were talking about, the way you explained it and stuff was really good. Well, the, we're, we're talking about the adventures of parenting, the adventures of uh, raising children. And it does seem, uh, as we watch those around us and get conversations and questions and stuff, and not only is anything new, but it seems like uh, the thrill and the adventure of raising children is gone for a lot of people. It's just a chore. Yeah. It's just work. Um, and so we just kind of want to have a conversation. We're not we don't have like a list of things that we want to cover and lay out there. We just want to kind of reminisce yeah. about, because our kids are gone. Yeah, they're all grown. Uh, they're all grown adults. And we ra we talked about that. We, we talked about how we raised them to be, to live their lives. We didn't want them to live with us forever or even right next door to us. We wanted them to be individuals. And... and and now at times it's like, you know, we've got this venture starting up in Wyoming and, and uh, you know, I kind of reach out to my boys and it's like, hey, won't you come help me ride and, and uh, tune up these horses and do this. And, mm -hmm. but they've all got their own lives. And I'm like, dang it. Yeah. But then that's how we raise them. So we can't fuss, you it's know. That's true, yeah. Uh, and. Uh, but if you do it, I think that shows that if you do it right, not to say we didn't mess up because we messed up a lot, but if you do it right, then you miss them. You want them around, right? but you, right. you see what I'm saying? Right. It's like, well, if, if I want them to be around, that means I like them and I, I must've done something right. Well, what is, I mean, what is the purpose? What is the purpose of raising children? To raise good adults. To create good adults. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, and a good adult and circumstances are circumstances, you know, we're not taking away that, but ultimately, optimally, you want to wind up with adults that are, uh, self-sustaining, Self, yep. uh, independent, mm -hmm. but caring, <clears throat> have not lost the bond with family, uh, but are out creating their own branch of the mm -hmm. family and perpetuating the name. Sure right yeah so when we started out on this adventure you only wanted two kids right no no two plus ten i i actually told him but when when he proposed to me i said you know i want tw at least 12 kids right and uh he he well your response was you remember what your response was I don't. It, it was, that's fine as long as they're all boys. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, um, that's not up to me. That's up to you. <laughs> but, you know, we had four yeah. girls and three boys, and he loves his girls just right. as much as his boys. They're right. they are so fun. But well, anyway. I, I came from a very large family. I mean, I don't, I've got three siblings. I have three younger sisters. But my mom is a baby of 12. My dad was the oldest of nine. And my dad's aunts and uncles on his side there were like 12 or 15 of them and on my mom's side they were just family everywhere so I came from a very large extended family uh, from the same area there in Kentucky that's why I had to go to Alaska to get a wife I had to make sure and she's from California it's the only way I could guarantee that I tell them that huh? why'd you tell them I'm from California I was born in California I'm not from California <laughs> That's the only way I could guarantee that I'd marry a wife I wasn't related to. Oh. Um, and uh, so, but, but, and she came from a less than ideal family. Yeah. And uh, so. One, basically one sister. One sister. Just me and my sister. And, and, uh, and so she wanted, she wanted what she didn't grow up with. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and I wanted what I grew up with. So we decided on a lot of kids. Yeah. Now we didn't line up with 12 kids. No, I, but I got to seven. She and got so to I seven. Got, I got Phil, I got my quiver full. And she, ca did. she came to me one day and she's like, honey, I can't have another one. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, 12 was your number, not mine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you keep popping them out and I'll keep supporting them. I'll keep, I'll keep feeding them. And, but whenever you're done, I mean, it's, it's your choice. And so she said, well, I'm done. So then, so then yeah. we stopped. Um, but it's been an adventure. Yes. And, uh, but that's what we wanted, what we chose. Right. But it's not for everyone to have the adventure that we did. Some people choose to settle down in a house for, and raise their kids the whole 18 years they're in that house. And that's fine. But what we're trying to get at is that it still can be an adventure. Right? Yeah. I mean, it can be. Yeah. And you know, the only difference, and from someone who has lived a life of adventure, uh, other people would look at it as just deprivation and terror at times. The only difference between the two is your attitude towards it. Yeah. They go, why would you choose to why, live like why that? Why would you do that? So, our first, so our first child, then. Uh, yeah. I was 18 when I got pregnant, 19 when I had it. Right. So keep that in mind. Very right. young. We got we we got married. She was eighteen when we got married, and then she was pregnant within three months. Three weeks. Three weeks after pregnant our within three weeks. our wedding, yeah. I got pregnant. Because because I said I'm six years older than she is, and I said if we're gonna have a lot of kids, I don't want to be seventy five years old out in the front <laughs> yard, creaking along <laughs> trying to throw a football to my son, you know, and and so if we're gonna have them, now this sounds very mercenary. But I said, if we're going to have them, we're going to have them all. We're going to have them right now. We're going to raise them and we're going to get rid of them. Yeah. While we're still young enough to enjoy each to other. To enjoy each other. And, uh, and, so and we, we did that. Well, yeah, we yeah. started right Which away. We, we have enjoyed. Um, and uh, so, but, so when she got pregnant with her first, uh, she, when she got pregnant, she weighed 117 pounds. She's not a big woman. 114. Okay? 114 pounds. 114. Pound. And uh, so when, when she started and she approached that first um, pregnancy, t I tell them how you went through with your journals and your diet. And, oh, I attacked it. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I don't know what to tell them. I mean, I, well, I attacked she, it. She I, did, read, I read were, all the books. And read the, all the books. Yeah, and, and we she, went to the birthing class yeah. thing. And, we would not, would not drink anything with caffeine in it. No, caffeine. I didn't drink caffeine. Found all these special pregnancy teas yeah. and <laughs> walked and and uh, so and then she woke me up one morning and uh, said it's time to go. Well, she had been laying there in the bed with a flashlight and a watch and a pencil and paper, yeah. timing her contractions. her contractions. And she and so when it came down to the point, she's like, "Okay, it's time to go." And we lived out in the country, out way rural, out in Kentucky. And uh, so we jumped up and went to the hospital. My parents lived a few miles away in the area. And I called them and, uh, and we said, you know, she's small, she's little, and it's her first one. And uh, so, you know, it's gonna take a while. So I called my mom and dad and I said, just wanna let you know, we're at the hospital, but it's her first it's one. And so don't rush. In fact, you got, it was Sunday morning. It was early, like three o'clock in the morning. Three o'clock Sunday. I said, so you guys get up, have breakfast, go to church, you know, whatever. And then when you come back, I think it was an hour later, I called her and said, if you want to be here when this baby's born, you better get it here went, now. It went really fast. I think, especially for a first one. It was really fast. It was five hours. Five hours. From total. the first contraction till he was born, it was five hours. And how much did he weigh? Eight pounds. So I'm on, so this is another subject we were talking about last night that which actually this is a subject that started it okay that rolled into this conversation um she um the and this is her view okay I don't have a say in this because I have never experienced this so this is not oh. you 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 tell them uh, your viewpoint about <clears throat> Well, we were talking, um, I was watching a video about a woman giving birth and it just, the way that she gave birth, you know, she had the epidural and everything and she had time for it. It was a long labor and everything. And 
I'm trying to be, I want to be careful here because I don't, I have two daughters who have given birth and they both had epidurals and I supported it. I fully do. Okay. Um, but my choice was I wanted to, to have the natural birth. Now the first one, maybe not quite as much. I didn't know what I was doing and it happened so fast. There wasn't even time for an epidural or anything. But after that, each baby I, I wanted, I had experienced it with no pain medication the first time. And I thought, well, I, I can do that again. And I did it and I did it because I wanted to, like I had the choice later on in some of the births to have an epidural or pain medication of some kind, but I didn't want that because I wanted to experience the, um, what's the word that I used last night? Uh, the clo the, <coughs> <coughs> well, she, she wanted to experience the joy that follows the agony. Well, yeah, but I also, while I was laying there and I was having contractions, the painful contractions, I wanted to, I guess, prove to myself that I could do it in some ways. I wanted to show myself that I had the strength to do this. And, and I want to be careful here because I'm not saying that if you have an epidural or pain medication, you're not strong. You, you're not a strong person. I'm not saying that. Like I said, right. it, she, it's coming out wrong. No, no <laughs> you're all right. She I, wanted to pay the full, she wanted to pay the full Monty on it. I, I, I paid everything there was to pay. Well, like for me, it was like, okay, I got pregnant. I've carried this baby for nine months. I want to know what it's like. I wanted to experience the full birth. And to have to be forced to lay in the bed and the monitor tell me when I'm having contractions because you can't feel anything because you're on pain medication. To me, it was, it, it just wasn't real. And I couldn't experience the real joy of myself birthing that baby, pushing that baby out and the experience of holding that baby and knowing what I went through to get that baby, developed a deep connection with that baby. Sure. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. So then... Now, if I had went through, I'm going to say this. My sister endured over 30 hours of labor. 30 hours. No pain meds, nothing. And she ended up having to have a cesarean both times. It, uh, it's not... It, yeah, I'm not encouraging no everybody. There's it, no judgment no. to do one thing or the other. It's just my experience. It's just one side of it. So now, <laughs> when you got pregnant again I was cowboy in Wyoming right? yeah and I said I ain't going to the hospital it was a terrible experience at that hospital they yeah. stuck me in a teeny little room closet thing laid me on my back put a monitor on me and said endure like it was horrid it was a bad hospital there are good hospitals yeah but this one was this not one actually the, and I said I'm not doing that again this is actually the exact same hospital that uh, my father just got sent home from hospice where he just passed right, away same it was the exact same hospital in Kentucky um, yeah. And so anyhow, I was cowboying in Wyoming when you became expectant again. And in the midst of that, we moved to Alaska. Mm -hmm. To a remote and village. We moved to a remote yeah. village with no road, no nothing. And we uh, flew in. And I got a job at a hunting <clears throat> lodge. And so this time she we had friends that um, she was a midwife. And so she flew out the yeah. last we bit. We flew her help. out there to, to bird the baby. Yeah. for us well <laughs> to help me birth the baby and and that process was what three hours two hours and 45 minutes two hours and 45 minutes from the first contraction until i'm i'm sorry ladies i'm gonna apologize right now i'm sitting here i'm not bragging my body just did it i i had no control over the length of time my labors were all of my labors the longest labor was ben's it was five hours yeah. Oh, well, and I, I can't. I'm going to. I don't claim any credit for that at all. I'm going to partially disagree. Okay. Because I was there with her for every single pregnancy and she ate fanatically well. And she walked and she stayed healthy and she did the exercise. And well, then I after she got to a certain point, she she drank the red. What was it? Tea. Black know, cohosh, I think. Or no, something. red raspberry. Oh, red raspberry. Red raspberry yeah. tea. So she it preps your uterus. Yeah. So she really there. did a lot of work into <laughs> it. Okay. So Jesse was born 
in a remote village in Alaska at a hunting lodge. Um, and then Holly. I lay on my back one time for that. No. It's another tip. Try to stay on your feet if you can. Yep. Gravity works. And then Holly anyway. was born in a cabin in out Palmer, Alaska. Palmer, Alaska. Now With midwives. Had a midwife hours. there in case there was a problem. She gave birth and they had cooked a spaghetti or a lasagna, lasagna, lasagna dinner downstairs. Bread. She gave birth and within what? A few hours I was down there eating it. Yeah, she was, walked down the stars, stairs in that man. cabin and sat down and <laughs> ate a big plate of lasagna. Yeah, I was ready to go. That morning we were sledding. I was out pulling the kids on the sled and I was, oh, I'm having contractions. Let's go inside and have a baby. <laughs> Anyway, let's move on. Let's move on. Shelby. Okay. I, I stopped for a little while having kids, about three years. And just my body was like, it, those three were in th were, were within four years of each other. So it was taking its toll already. And um, we were struggling. in our, We were struggling in our marriage and in life. And it was like, we need to take a little break. So we took a three-year break. Um, got pregnant with Shelby. And... We were in. We were in Papua New Guinea, yes. up in the remote highlands, mountains in the Bush Village. In now bush. this is National Geographic level. Yeah. Like loincloth. Bone in the nose. <laughs> yeah. The whole thing. Yeah, we were out there teaching. So, so she and she decided that. I wanted to have the baby. In now, the if she was going to have the ba baby in the hospital, I was going to fly her home to the states. The yeah, hospital was... situation there is not uh, ideal. And so we were careful about that and prayed about it a lot. We did. And I'm the, a big part of this is not just the adventure. Okay. I, I saw the adventure in having a baby in the remote jungles of Papua New Guinea where no white baby had been born. In, our, that, our, in that area. Our yeah. kid, yeah, in the jungles. Um, our, our three kids were the first white children in that village. Um, this was very remote, but it's not just the adventure. It was to build a connection with the people. Um, you know, I was out there every day trying to learn the language and, and develop a relationship with the ladies and the people out there, but it's, it's hard. And I saw that if I was to have the baby in the village with them, it, there would be a connection with them. And I wanted that. Right. There's a, there's a. When we were in that life in missions, and I'm not going to get off on a tangent here. Please don't. I, I'm not. Uh, there's a definite disconnect between your average uh, missionary, teacher, whatever, and the locals. Financially, culturally, educationally, attitude, everything. Yeah. And we went in, and I was very determined that it was not going to be us and them. Um, whatever house they lived in, we did. Whatever thin little blanket made in China that they used, that's what we bought and used. We ate their diet. We didn't ship in our own diet. We ate what they ate. And uh, they would have, because of certain cultural taboos, they would go build a little temporary hut out in the jungle, out of the village, put down banana leaves, mm -hmm. and the ladies would go out there and give birth out there um and uh and so it, it was a very major deal for us where we were to continue that we're not better than you we're we're not um it's not a us and you but i did call the elders together uh to call them in and uh, of the village and just out of respect and said listen uh I understand and fully respect your guys' tradition of of going out and not um, having the baby in the hut in it, the house. Yeah, it was it was a it was it was a blood taboo. Yeah, is what it was. Yeah. Um, and uh, and I said I understand that. I said my wife is very courageous up to a point. I said, but uh, I I would like your permission. I would like the blessing of the village. I would like your permission for her to actually have the baby in the house. And they were just, oh, well, of course, absolutely. I yeah, mean, we're so we're so shocked and thrilled they're actually going to have it out here with us where we have it. Not a problem at all in the house. 
But I have to tell a story. Okay. The reason we got to that point where we decided we were going to have the baby in the village. We had um, one morning, I woke up and came out. It was just sunrise, probably six o'clock or whatever. And some of the women or men were standing out there and waiting for us to get up. And we're like, what's going on? And they said, we had some friends come in last night, uh, late, and one of the women started labor and she had a baby while she was here. And we can't get the placenta to come out. So we thought maybe you could help us. We're like, and she'd been out there for hours. They didn't want to disturb us. So they they came and got us. We So I went out, um, I got my, my birthing book. You know, even though I had three babies, I, it was still weird. And so I went out, followed them out there, in the jungle, like behind the houses, out in the bush. And I come up on this crowd of women sitting out and the men wouldn't come out. Just women sitting around this lady laying on banana leaves, banana tree leaves. They had spread them out and she's laying there holding her baby. The placenta is still inside her with the cord attached. And they, she'd been laying there for two or three hours. They couldn't get it out. And I, I had to get my mind, I'm like, I can't believe this is real. I can't believe I'm experiencing this. I couldn't understand it, but I, I had to get my mind. Okay, I just got to help her. Anyway, long story. We got her, we got her the placenta delivered. Everything was fine. I went home and I said, honey, <laughs> I am not having this baby on banana leaves in the jungle. If I'm going to have the baby here in the village, it needs to be in the house. So then he went and called the elders and said, look, she's a little bit terrified of having it out on the banana leaves. Oh, and they didn't have a problem. So also the um, Ben and Jesse were how old? Uh, six and four, six and five, yeah. something like that. So seven six, and six and five, and so all their friends, all the village, and I mean, we were just embraced. We loved these people so much, and all of the boys' friends were all all these little boys in the village, you know. And so that was, and so I told, yeah. I told the kids. I said, um, the baby that mama's carrying, she's gonna be oh. <laughs> she's gonna be born here in the village, so she's gonna be black. <laughs> and they looked at me big eyed. Yeah. Yeah. Daddy. And, and yeah, daddy, daddy. And I'm like, no, no. I mean all these babies out in the village were all born here in Papua New Guinea and they're all black. So we're gonna have a new Guinea baby and she's gonna be black. And they would they were like daddy's just teasing and stuff. They they yeah. I think they kind of but they're little kids, so yeah. You know, they so waited. When when the when Shelby was <laughs> born, uh, and my sister came out, flew out, so oh, that yeah, she would help. have a woman there to help, you know. But I caught the baby. Yeah. Yeah. I was standing and, up. And uh, so we put, you know, random kids <laughs> off in a little separate uh, room in there, and she had the baby, and and we got everything all wrapped up, and called the kids out, and Jesse walked out and walked up and walked over and looked. He was four years old. And he looked around and said, she's white. She's white. <laughs> she's white, daddy. Yeah, he was waiting to see, yeah. is it really going to be he black? Was, he was kind of hoping it was going to be another one of his little friends, but no, she's white. And uh, so we, we had her out there, super healthy. Um, yeah. And uh, just super, our kids are all really, really close. Um, and uh, so, and she was definitely the village baby. It definitely did yeah. that connection. Yeah. And so I was happy to be able, I was happy everything went okay. But the adventure of it, I'm not recommending y'all go and do that. It's just, you know, find some adventure. Find a way to make it adventurous. It's a, it's a miracle. It is. I mean, ha having a baby, listen, you have that baby and all you hear is crying. And all you smell is that mustard colostrum diaper, the first... <laughs> And, it's just, and, then, and then you lost your freedom and you don't get any sleep and there's this and there's that. Listen, it is a noisy, stinky, dependent little miracle. And how you look at it, how you approach it, your attitude about it, it is going to affect everything. Um, it's going to affect how children aren't dumb. You don't have to say how you feel about that child. Children are smarter. They have more instinct than adults, all right? And they'll pick it up and they know. They may not be able to define it. They may not put their finger on it, but if you resent that child because it cost you some sleep, because it cost you some financial freedom, 
um, because it, it costs you some personal time freedom. Um, they may not be able to define and put your finger up, but they know what it is. They'll know something is crosswise in your attitude towards it. It, it has to. I mean, it's, you know, it's their instinct for survival. Okay. So it's, you know, you, you have to approach that adventure. Yeah. And I think too many people nowadays think, well, it's just easy. Um, I'll just put them in daycare or whatever. They, they don't sacrifice. Before you have kids, you need to determine that you're going to be able to sacrifice some of yourself. And you're going, and sacrifice means giving up something that's important to you, that costs you, it costs you to give it. So, so we're going to step out of, step out of the easy realm here. Okay. Going to speak a little bit of uncomfortable truth. All right. Your job, whatever your job is, your career, whatever your career is, is not a personal miracle. Your child is a personal miracle. Mm -hmm. It's your blood. It's your genetics. It's your DNA. You made that inside of you. All right? You carried that inside of you. It is a miracle, and it is a reflection of you. Your job is not. If whatever job or career you got, if you quit and leave that, somebody else is going to step right into that position. But no one, even someone who lovingly comes in and raises an orphan, no one else will ever be the birth mother of that baby. So Deanna's right. If before you decide to have children, decide whether you're going to actually treat this miracle like the miracle as it is, or if you're going to hand this miracle off to somebody else to feed and to clothe and to raise while you go back and pursue that job where you are imminently replaceable. Now, I know that's, that's some folks going to get mad yeah, about that, aren't they? Are. But that's just the truth. That's just the way it is. There's no job. There is no career on the face of this earth that is as valuable as a child. And it does not matter what you think you can accomplish or what you think you can bring about in a career or in a job. You can't do anything as important and as miraculous as raising that baby fully in 100%. Okay. Um, so anyway, I, I think it's enough of that. All yeah, right? I mean, I, I agree. So then we came back and she accidentally got unintentionally got pregnant again with the twins. Well, that's not totally accurate. We were talking trapped. We were talking one day and Shelby was about four or five months old, somewhere around there. And we said, you know, she's so far apart from the other three. Uh, our oldest three were super close, like really close. Even though it was two boys and a girl, Holly was like part of the boys. She was always with them, always doing everything. And I was afraid that Shelby would get left out. And I said, we should have another baby really close in age to Shelby. So she has a buddy her age because there's a three and a half year gap. So we did. We're like, okay, let's get pregnant. And we, had, we got pregnant with twins. Well, we <laughs> Always take that into account. We, we, lived, twins. <laughs> we lived in New Guinea and because we ate the diet that the people ate. Oh, that's right. <laughs> um, the major staple there is called cow cow and it's a, a yam. It's a sweet potato. Sweet potatoes. Well, sweet potatoes are chock full of progesterine uh, yeah what and, and and it really if you're not used to that being a steady part of your diet and all of a sudden it becomes a major part of your diet it really increases your chance of having multiple births yeah we didn't know well, that. multiples in a yeah not mo yeah mul multiples in a yeah birth twins yeah. triplets yeah so yeah we were eating i was eating sweet potatoes like crazy and i'd never eaten them before <clears throat> so it was introduced in my diet and i got i got twins anyway found that out later yeah but anyway the twins, we came home from New Guinea when I was about seven months pregnant. I was a real, little bit big and everything was kind of off. So we went and got checked out, found out it was twins. Well, what are we going to do? How did we find out it was twins? She went oh, back man. to get a sonogram. And so I'm sitting out in the waiting room with with the four. The four kids. And all of a sudden this woman <laughs> comes breezing through. I mean, in a hurry. I mean, cutting a trail through there, putting on a white lab coat. And I watched her go by and I'm like, well, that ain't good. And she went in the room where Deanna was, 
And then after a minute, a nurse came out and said, Mr. Noel, I'll, I'll watch the children if you want to go on in. Well, and I had been in there and the, the ultrasound tech got the thing on my belly and everything. And I started to look at the screen and she immediately pulled it off. She said, oh, I gotta, I'll be right back. And so she left, I thought nothing of it. And then when the other doctor came in, I thought, oh no, something's wrong. And then he came, and then he came yeah. and got you. Yeah, so she was seven months and then, when we found out. Yeah, she twins. came and got you, you came in, we stood there and watched and he said, so it's twins. So anyway, yeah. yeah. And then we went home, decided we want a home birth again. Um, found a, that's a long story in itself, found a midwife, had the twins, um, had two false labors. So that takes into, you gotta take that into account when I say this next part, two false labors. We had everything set up and ready and then the contractions stopped. So I was pre prepared and ready. And then when Virginia was born, it was literally 45 minutes from the first contraction till she was born. And, and <laughs> there's a lot of women out there really mad at me right now. <laughs> I, I've heard even faster stories than that. So. Yeah. Anyway, but then they, three hours later, Victoria was born. And, and she was born breech. She was breech, and it, it was the next and, morning, too. So it yeah. was overnight, um, and not one o'clock in the morning. Not to get graphic, but it's like the, wa or the water sack started She's coming in. out. And I'm looking, and I literally, I'm not kidding, I see the water sack coming out, and I see two little feet in that water sack <laughs> kicking. And I'm like, that's not, I've been through enough of this. That ain't supposed to be like that. <laughs> And so we had an older midwife. She was yeah. an elderly woman, and she she came in and yeah, and she, and birthed her out. Yeah. Yeah. So that was traumatic. And then, so they have different birthdays and everything. So that's an adventure too. You know, I'll, it's just yeah. I should have gone to the hospital, but it's like, I just wanted to do it. I wanted to the adventure. That was part of it. Yeah. And then. Uh, well, and we wanted the bonding, and we just wanted the and yeah. you know. We haven't had a lot of good experiences in hospitals across the board. No. Um, this is nothing against any healthcare workers, okay? Nothing. Nurses are the lifeblood, and, and you know they keep this. I, I've been in. I've had some surgeries, and I've been in some trauma in the hospital just from my life and work, and met some wonderful people. Mm -hmm. But just the system as a whole is. Uh, we, we've not had real good experience. And so when we discovered that she was healthy and yeah. she was a baby birthing machine, yeah. I mean, why we not? said, you know, why give $30,000 a pop, you know, yeah. for a doctor to come in and catch this baby? I'll catch him for free. <laughs> and I mean, I've helped, you know, been there with puppies and birth calves oh and goodness. horses and <laughs> stuff. How, how are good okay, let's move on. Oh <laughs> my goodness. Um, then twins were 11 months old. I did have some complications with their labor, um, wound prolapse and stuff, and I, sh I wasn't supposed to get pregnant for a while or ever. And, you know, we were careful, but we didn't do anything permanent. Um, we just weren't ready for that step. Got pregnant when they were 11 months old. I was scared to death at that one. I said, I can't, I can't have, I already have a toddler and twin newborns, uh, newborn twins. How am I gonna have another baby? So, I mean, they were, 11 months old, but still to me, they were new. <laughs> so I had Will, um, our last baby, uh, when they were like year and a half old. And so I had four little ones under four years old. Um, adventure more, yeah. but I chose, that's what I wanted to do. And I didn't put them in daycare. I'm like, I'm going to give up. I, I had dreams too. I wanted to be a photographer or an, a an actress. I wanted to go as shy as I am on camera right now, I was in, you know, in some school plays and stuff. And I had these dreams too. But when I had that baby, that first baby, I'm like, this is what I want to do. I want to raise, I want to know that I raised an adult and put a good adult in the world. And all seven of them were adventures. All growing up, I stayed home with them. I sacrificed money. He sacrificed a lot because all of his money, all of our money was poured into raising those kids so that I could stay home with them. I did not work a job. That's what I wanted to do. Um, it's just my choice. I'm just yeah. saying, find yeah. where well, where it is. Find I, your I adventure. Guess what, I guess what we're trying to say is not if you're bent in another direction, that's fine. That we're not. But if you're starting out and you say, you know, that's the way they used to do it. Um, that home mom 
but that's not real big in today's society. I wish we could still do that. You can. That's all we're saying. Mm -hmm. If you have a bent to be a mom and to raise your child, and you're kind of on the fence because society is telling you that that means you're not free, you're not liberated, that somehow you're less of a woman. I dare, I dare, I double dog dare any woman out there, any woman. I don't care what you do. I don't care what your job is. I don't care how you've succeeded. I dare you to say that you've accomplished more and you're more of a woman than she is. I dare you. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, so you don't That's lose. <laughs> you don't lose. She has seven mm -hmm. very um, well-adjusted, well-rounded um, adults in the world that are contributing to society, contributing to those around them. Uh, <clears throat> seven of them Be that she birthed yeah. and she educated at home homeschool uh now i had my little part i was there okay. <laughs> of course um, hey, hey i want to i want to say something um i poured myself into them i invested in them and i sacrificed and i think that's where women today think that's not important or they can't do it and you can do it and um my children uh, more important than i think any of that is my children no my children will never wonder if I love them or if I'm there for them. All seven of my kids love their mama. They're proud of their mama. And they they know they can pick up the phone and call me about anything, any time of day or night. They, they never will doubt my love for them. And I think a lot of kids now wonder. They wonder, am I loved? Does my mama love me? And I, I just, I have such a, it just, it breaks my heart. And I guess that's for my childhood. You know, yeah. I was determined. <coughs> anyway, <coughs> I, I just wanted yeah. to just throw that out right. there. It's, you, you can do it. So we just wanted to share. Yeah, it's getting long. So yeah. we, we just want to share you. our side of it. Okay. And that there is still, um, it, it is a precious adventure. Mm -hmm. And it's an adventure. Mm -hmm. It is. You know, I mean, it, it's like. You know, Shelby, when she was little, she smashed her finger in the door. Oh, yeah. That, and while she's that. in there trying to doctor that, one of the twins pulls a jug of cooking oil off on them. <laughs> and so she comes out. I'm Shelby's still crying. Up. She grabs this one up, takes her in there to try to clean her up. And the other twin grabs the cooking oil, pulls it down again, pours yes. it in the floor. And they're doing it. And it's an adventure. <laughs> Okay, Will comes in Laugh about it. with a with a scalp open and blood flowing down because one of his brothers bounced a rock off his head. Yeah. You know, or they've got him. We live on a house with steep hills coming off of it, and they're out there with tote lids pushing each other off that hill. I'm yeah. on a long steep hill. Yeah. And, you know, you come home, it's like, Ben saved me from drowning today. They're yeah. down at the creek. I mean, yeah. you know. It's Quite like, the adventure. It, it's the adventure. Yeah. And life is as adventurous as you make it and as you view it. And that has to do with marriage. It has to do with raising children. It has to do with everything. Okay? All right. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> we did it. Well, anyway, um, I don't know if this video turned out like what we thought or what we planned, but there it is. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, go see the Dwayne's channel. Most of you are probably already on Dwayne's channel anyway, but um, you yeah. know, click like, share it. Uh, I hope it was encouraging. That's what our goal is, always to encourage. Comment. I love to hear stories. Give me your birth story. Give me any adventures you've had or if, that you want to experience or whatever. Ask questions. Build a community. I love it. Um, just be nice because if you're not nice, your comment won't be on there anymore. Yeah. So just uh, be nice. That's what it, we try to do. If you're a modern liberated woman <laughs> and this angers you or insults you, that's okay. Just be nice. Yeah, just be nice, please. All right. Yeah. And we have the the Dry Creek podcast. Yes. And if this turns out pretty good, this may be my next podcast is conversation. We've been wanting to do one yeah. on there. So. That'd be good. All right. Well, you guys have a wonderful day. Uh, and don't forget to always um, have that grit and give grace where it's needed, maybe where it's not deserved, but give grace. And um, have a wonderful day. <laughs>